When it comes to picking an agent, it's good to do some investigating. Welcome to the Red Desk, where a sharp dressed host dishes out knowledge you need to make good real estate decisions. Today, we are asking all the right questions, all 15 of them. Hiring a real estate agent is a big deal. If you go with the wrong person, you could be in for quite an adventure. Hidden fees, not selling your home by your deadline, being stuck in limbo, plenty can go wrong with a bad agent. We like to say real estate agents are like safari guides. And you do not want to wake up on day three of your journey and realize your guide is lost and forgot most of the food. We're gonna go on a little galactic adventure. There are three worlds of important real estate questions. Expertise, pricing, and style. Let's explore. There are five questions on each world and all of them are important. So make sure you watch to the end to cover all your bases. First up, the world of expertise. This world is about testing your agent's expertise, how they think, what they're good at, and seeing what ideas they have for selling your home. Remember, you are hiring this person and you're about to be putting a lot of trust in them. It's a big commitment, so don't be afraid to get a little tough. Start by asking how long they've been in the business. Experienced agents may have a great record, but that also means that they may not be able to spend as much time with you. New agents are the opposite. They may be a bit riskier, but you'll get more of their time. There's no perfect answer, but knowing their background will change how you feel about the rest of what they say. Some agents work mainly with buyers, others with sellers, some with both. Agents also specialize by property type, location, even housing type. So if you're selling a townhome in a popular neighborhood, maybe you shouldn't work with the guy who has only sold ranch houses outside of the city. Look for an answer that makes you feel confident that they've worked with sellers like you before. This is their opportunity to convince you that they know the landscape. You're looking for specific neighborhood price ranges, thoughts on the speed and volatility of the market, and whether it's better for buyers or sellers right now. Now it's time for the one-two punch. Ask them their specific plans for you. They should be excited and focused on what you need. Their plan should be backed by creativity, reason, and expertise. You want specifics on improving your home, reaching buyers, and leveraging their network. With a decision this big, you gotta ask for references, even if they were recommended to you. If they're weird about it, well, that's a red flag. They should have recent online reviews for the past year. If those are easy to find, then that's a good sign. Off to the next planet, price. Ooh, that landing was right on the money. Let's talk expenses. Hiring a home photographer, getting a home ready for showing, and advertising online all cost money. Some seller agents roll these service costs into their fee, which usually means they take a higher percentage of the sale. Others pass them on to you. So ask specifically what they'll cover and what you will be responsible for. Seller agents usually charge a percent of the selling price and split it between the seller's agent and the buyer's agent. And the total commission is usually around five to 6% of the selling price. So for a $400,000 home, that's between 20,000 and 24,000 for both agents. Your goal is to get that number as low as possible while still making it worth it for them. And that's easier the less established your agent is and the fewer costs they cover. Most buying and selling agents get paid when the house sells. If they have other fees or costs up front, ask them why and be direct. This will probably only come up if you work with a hotshot who has a stellar record, but you should figure out what you're getting in return. Unless you have real estate experience, you want an agent who will be there every step of the way. The last thing you want is to be stuck in a contract with an agent who makes you do most of the work and just shows up to collect a paycheck. Hosting showings, preparing the home for open houses, having phone calls to negotiate with interested buyers, it all takes time. So make sure that their price feels matched to their service. Some contracts have fees for ending your professional relationship. This isn't a deal breaker if the timeline is pretty short, like three months or so. 
but make sure you're not getting stuck in anything long term. It's not super uncommon to have termination clauses in contracts, but there's no good reason for a real estate agent to try to lock you into something without telling you. So ask to get the details explained if it's not making sense. Okay, time to go off to the last stop on our galactic adventure. It's time for style. Actually, not that kind of style. You don't want a selling agent who just puts a for sale sign in your yard. On the other hand, some agents can be a bit too much. Betty, it's 4 a.m. I don't care if Jack from Tulsa is interested. <sighs> Betty aside, most of the time, the more communication your agent provides, the better. Just ask what you can expect and see if it feels good to you. On a similar note, you wanna find someone who compliments your style. Like if you're laid back, then maybe you want someone who is super organized and handles all little details without bothering you too much. But if you can't help but be involved with everything, then maybe you need someone who approaches it more like a partnership. If you're working with an agency, it can feel a bit weird to be handed off to an assistant or other agent after getting to know someone. So just ask if they are who you'll be working with the whole time. There are a lot of players involved when selling a house. Inspectors, escrow companies, contractors. That's why hiring a good agent is so important. If they're bad, that can get ugly fast. If your agent is good, chances are everyone they work with is great. And finally, give them an open-ended chance to convince you. If they can't convince you to work with them, what makes you think they can convince someone to buy a home at the best price for you? One last thing, choosing an agent can feel scary, but trust your gut. If it feels good, it probably is. If you're impressed by someone's expertise and feel confident in them after asking these questions, run with it. That's it for this episode, but just one more thing. If you wanna skip all that stress and just work with an agent you can trust out the gate, then Rocket Homes has your back. They have verified partner agents who are experts in local markets all over the country. So they're able to take advantage of current trends in your area. Plus, they vet their top rated real estate agents and make sure their reputation and track record are stellar. You can see what that's all about in the description. Until next time, Red Desk out. Thank you guys for watching. Check out more Red Desk videos here and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.